Welcome to Lethal Engineering, the deadliest show on the internet. Today I'm going to show you how I built this, a 3D printed Stormtrooper helmet. I found the files for this Stormtrooper helmet on Thingiverse from a user named Jeffro. He's got several designs, including this Stormtrooper helmet. I printed in white POA on my Creality CR10 with an overhang angle of 80%. Each of the large pieces took about 16 hours to print. In total, there was probably about 100 hours worth of 3D printing that went into this. I'm also gonna remove all the supports. I suppose that has to happen before I sand. 100 grit sandpaper to start. I've gone through and done a once over with 100 grit sandpaper, and now I'm going to go through with a second pass of the 100 grit sandpaper. So the pieces are easy, these kind of uniform pieces, but these non-uniform pieces are really difficult. Getting in all the different grooves and the print lines are very noticeable on these. I'm not gonna get it perfect, but I wanna get it at least good before I start gluing all the pieces together. I've got all the sanding complete. I did another couple passes with the 100 grit sandpaper, 150 grit sandpaper, and 220 grit sandpaper, as well as adding this 3M acryl green to any spots that had um, large imperfections or large gaps that needed to be filled in. Some pieces I added a whole bunch of it, and some pieces not at all. Now I'm going to go ahead and glue all of these pieces together. My uh, nose won't start bro stop running, so I've rolled up these pieces of toilet paper to kind of clog it. Don't mind them. Uh, let's just start gluing it and see what happens. Famous last words. I guess I can just cut it off if it doesn't all line up. I finished gluing everything together on the mask and it did not turn out as well as I was hoping. This piece is a little more complicated than the Kylo Ren mask that I previously did. There's just more parts. You look around on this, there's huge gaps between the pieces. Here, there's a large gap. I think the poor quality is a result of two things. Getting all the pieces to line up is really difficult. Once one piece kind of gets off a little bit, then the problems just compound to future pieces. If I were to do this again, I would modify the files for the pieces to have pins in between each of the pieces so that they just all snap together perfectly and are perfectly aligned. And the second thing I would have done is make sure that I sanded down the edges of all the pieces really well so that they butt up against each other nice and easily. I'm gonna add that acryl green on and sand it all down. <laughs> this helmet is huge. After two coats of the acryl green and then sanding it down, I'm now gonna apply the XTC 3D. There's still very clear imperfections, but I'm hoping that the XTC 3D will at least fill those in a little bit. First impressions of the first layer of XTC 3D. It went on pretty well. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and sand off all the rough spots. I continue to get these like little abrasive feel um, over a majority of the print. So I'm gonna smooth this out with some 220 grit sandpaper and then I'm gonna apply a more complete second coat of XTC 3D. So I made up a double batch of the XTC 3D this time so that I can put on a thick coat and get really good coverage.
that XTC3D has had a chance to dry and I've gone over it again with 220 grit sandpaper. And now it's got a pretty smooth finish to it. I really globbed on the XTC3D for that last coat and it did a good job of smoothing in all the cracks, the 3D print lines, and all the joints where the pieces come together. The one problem was I really didn't apply it uniformly, so there's kind of some globs and some drips that need to be completely sanded up. But what I'm gonna do now is spray paint it with some filler primer so that I can see the high and low spots and then I'll sand all of those off. After adding that filler primer on there, I can now see where all the imperfections are. Let me show you. You can see right along here, we've got a nice little, some, a lot of imperfections. A lot of stuff that's going to need to be finished up with a lot more sanding. I've gone ahead and sanded it down, and now I'm going to go ahead and apply a second coat of the filler primer and then sand again. Coat number two. Sanding number two. Filler primer coat number three. Sanding pass number three. This is my fourth sanding pass. And we're gonna call that good enough. I've sanded this for about 20 hours over the past couple of days, making kind of marginal improvements with each pass. And it's to the point that I'm just gonna say that it's good enough. Um, I feel like I could still go for another couple of passes to really get all of the imperfections smoothed out. But at this point, I'm just sick of sanding for so long. So I'm gonna go apply the first coat of white paint to this. I'm using Rust-Oleum Gloss White. I finished applying the coats of white paint to the Stormtrooper helmet. I'm really pleased with how the white paint turned out, but uh, not so pleased with the overall quality. Whenever I paint things like this, I fool myself into thinking that the defects won't show up after paint, but they are always just magnified. Any sort of defect or spot is really noticeable up close. You might not be able to see it from the video, but along all of these seams here, any sort of minor chips um, are all very noticeable. I needed to have a perfectly smooth finish in order for this print to look good and I didn't spend nearly enough time sanding. Despite spending, you know, 20 hours of sanding, that just wasn't enough. Now I need to add all of the other colors, the blue, the gray, and the black, as well as adding the uh, Greebles, Greeblies, that I printed off, these little guys. I painted on the black and gray paint and now I'm going to remove all of the tape to see how my paint job turned out. I've gone through and removed all the tape and it looks pretty good. There were some overspray spots though that I've gone through and sanded off. I'm going through with a Sharpie and I'm outlining all of these gray sections. So you can see right here, I already did it. And yeah, just using a Sharpie and going around the outside to give it that nice accent. I thought about trying to paint that on there, but there's no way I'd be able to get the consistent width that I can get with a Sharpie. All done. So for the blue lines for the mask, my idea is to create a stencil. I found a stencil online that I'm gonna print out and I've scaled it down to be the correct size. I'm gonna print it out on this sticker paper and then cut out the areas that need to be blue, stick it on the helmet and then apply the blue spray paint. So I've heard that if you spray a base coat down of the background color, that it helps to seal in the stencil. So that's what I'm gonna try to do. I'll spray the white on, which hopefully seals the stencil, and then go back on with the blue, which is the color of the stripes. So white first to seal in the stencil. I've let that dry for about 10 minutes, and now I'm gonna spray on the blue. that turned out good, not great. 
few areas where the stencil was hard against the helmet turned out pretty good, but anywhere where there's a little gap in the stencil, the spray paint seeped underneath. Let's talk about the eye shield. The Stormtrooper lenses are actually like a dark green color, a translucent green color. And in order to kind of duplicate that, I ordered this green sheet of acrylic. Unfortunately though, it is not transparent at all. You can buy specifically made Stormtrooper lenses that are green and work great. But what I think I'm gonna do is go ahead and just make it a smoked gray. Um, I purchased this smoked gray acrylic for my Kylo Ren helmet and it works out really well. So I'm going ahead and use this to make my lenses. In the 3D print files that I downloaded from Thingiverse, there's two lenses in those files. So I'm gonna use these as like my buck and I'm going to mount these a little off of the 2x4 and then cut off little uh, pieces of acrylic out of this and just set the acrylic on there and then what I think I can do is set them in the oven and hopefully they'll just mold to the templates and then I'll just pop them off and glue them in the helmet. So these lenses turned out pretty well. They've got the nice complex contours to match what the templates have. And I've tried them in the helmet and they fit really well. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue these in. The Stormtrooper helmet is now completely finished. I'm really pleased with how this turned out. It's certainly not perfect. There's a lot of imperfections that you can see up close, but from a distance, it actually looks really cool and really nice. All in, there was probably about 150 hours that went into this. I'd say about 100 hours of 3D printing, and then 50 hours of sanding, gluing, priming, sanding, and painting. I learned some cool things like uh, how to add the foam to the inside of the helmet. I also used a stencil for the first time to make these blue lines. I think I'm gonna continue making these Star Wars helmets. On Thingiverse, there's several more that I'd like to make, including Captain Phasma, a Scout Trooper, C-3PO. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you also enjoy my other videos, and you should also subscribe down below to be notified about all my future projects. I've got a Solar Death Ray video that I plan on releasing soon, as well as the project I'm currently printing. I'll give you our two guesses what I'm printing.